Hello, my name is Sean Civic, Technical Marketing Engineer with Cisco. This video will show you how to get started with Cisco DNA Center Wireless Assurance. Troubleshooting wireless networks is hard. Cisco DNA Center with Wireless Assurance makes it easier by providing visibility, observability, and insights to ensure the health of users, applications, and network devices. Visibility allows you to view your network through multiple lenses, such as a map view, topology view, floor plan views, and list views. Observability helps you understand your overall network health and user experience. Not only does it create events, but it also correlates those events to eliminate excess noise and provide root cause analysis to help you identify what is actually causing the problem. It also includes a machine reasoning engine, which is like having a 30-year Cisco expert by your side helping you resolve issues. Insights provide trends and track changes over time. It creates automated baselines, network heat maps, network comparisons, and can provide a predictive model to allow you to anticipate problems before they become an issue. This can digitally transform your network from a reactive to a proactive model. It is incredibly easy to set up Cisco DNA Center with wireless assurance. All you have to do is create your network hierarchy, Discover your wireless LAN controller, which will also discover all your associated access points, and then assign those devices to sites. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is create your network hierarchy by clicking on Design, Network Hierarchy. Then click Add Site, Add Area. Then you'll give it a name, such as San Jose, and click Add. Now in San Jose, let's say that you have a building called Data Center, which is where your wireless LAN controller will be physically located, and you'll have another building called HQ, which is where your access points will be servicing clients. You'll click on the ellipsis next to San Jose and click Add Building. You enter the name of Data Center, and then you enter the address. Clicking on the link will automatically enter the GPS coordinates, and then you'll click Add. Then you'll add another building to San Jose called HQ by clicking on the ellipsis again and add building. Again, you'll enter the name and address and click add. Now, because HQ will have access points, we'll also create a floor. Click on the ellipsis next to HQ and click add floor. You'll give it a name of floor one and then add a floor map by clicking on the upload file button. You can use a JPEG file or a CAD drawing or even import from Ekahau. In this demo, you'll import a CAD file, which will allow you to import layers with attenuation values for walls, doors, and other obstacles. Let's import three layers with the appropriate attenuation values, and then click Use Selected Layers. CAD files will typically include the scale with the width, so you'll just click the Add button. Now that we've created our network hierarchy, we can move on to the discovery phase by clicking on Tools, Discovery. We'll click Add Discovery and then add a discovery name. Let's just call it WLC31, but it can be anything that you would like. For discovery, we do support CDP, IP address range, and LLDP. Let's select IP address range and enter the IP address of 10.0.0.31. Next, you'll add in your credentials. We haven't set up any global CLI or SNMP credentials yet, but NetConf is set to use port 830. NetConf is required for streaming telemetry on the 9800 WLC. We'll click Add Credentials and click Add CLI and SNMP Credentials. We'll then add the CLI credentials by giving them a name and entering the username and password. We'll save these credentials as global and be sure to click the Save button to save the credentials. Next, we'll enter the credentials for SNMP. We do support versions 2, Read and Write, and version 3. We'll create a SNMP v3 credentials by giving it a name, adding a username, setting the mode to authentication and privacy with authentication set to SHA and a password of at least 12 characters, and privacy set to AES128 also with a password of at least 12 characters. Again, we'll save them as global so we don't have to type them in next time, and be sure to click Save to save these credentials. Then we'll click Discover. We'll run the discovery now and click Next. This will take a few minutes to complete, and once it's finished, we'll want to ensure that all steps pass with green check marks. Now that the discovery is complete, we can view the device by navigating to Provision, Inventory. 
It is currently in the unassigned devices category and is currently syncing. Once it completes the sync, we'll be ready to assign it to a site. Now that the sync is complete, we'll see all the associated access points and we'll be ready to start assigning these devices to sites as well. Next, select the WLC, we'll click Assign and select the Data Center, which is where it will be physically located, and click Save. This will push out all the settings to enable streaming telemetry, such as configuring the DNA Center as a syslog server, a NetFlow collector, and SNMP trap server. You'll click Next and Assign. Then we'll assign the access points. We'll select all APs and click Assign. You'll choose the appropriate floor and click Apply to All, and then click Next and Assign. Now that all your devices are assigned to sites, we'll start getting the Assurance data. Clicking Assurance Health brings us to the Assurance Dashboard. From here, we can see a summarized view of the health status of all our routers, switches broken down into core, distribution, and access layers, wireless LAN controllers, and access points. We can also see the health status of all wired and wireless clients. We'll also see the health status of network services such as RADIUS and DHCP, as well as a list of the top 10 issues impacting our network. We can dig deeper into any category by clicking on the appropriate link. For instance, you'll click on the View Client Health to navigate to the Client Health Dashboard. From here, you can see more detailed health about your wireless clients. You can set the time range to be 3 hours, 24 hours, or 7 day increments, and you can travel back in time up to 30 days. You'll also see the breakdown of the health status of various clients and dashlets related to onboarding times, signal strength, signal to noise ratio, roaming times, client counts, etc. You can also click on a client to navigate to that client's 360 page. This page provides a highly detailed information related to the key performance indicators representing the overall health and performance of that client. You can also click on issues the client is experiencing, which will provide you a description of the problem, as well as various troubleshooting information related to that specific issue. For instance, this issue is a roaming issue and shows the onboarding transaction log, the floor map of where this error occurred, a number of clients impacted by the same issue, the number of client authentications, the number of client attempts, the amount of noise and interference at the time of the issue, as well as all the impacted location. And then it goes through a list of suggested actions to resolve this type of issue. From onboarding, we can see the health status of DHCP and AAA, as well as the health status of the client, SSID, the AP, and the controller. This can really help you determine where to focus your troubleshooting steps for faster resolution. The event viewer can show you exactly where and when errors are occurring. The path trace can show you the health status of all network devices between a source and a destination. However, we will have to add in routers and switches to get this information. Application experience also shows you the applications and health status of those applications that the user is using. And down below is more detailed information related to the client itself. The connectivity tab shows data transmitted and received, data rates, retries, and the RF tab shows signal strength and signal to noise ratio. The iOS analytics tabs shows you information from the phone's perspective, such as signal strength it is getting from APs and the reasons why the client disassociated from the network. This is just scratching the surface of Cisco DNA Center Wireless Assurance. There will be a follow-up video which goes through all the troubleshooting tools available to you in Cisco DNA Center. For more information or additional training resources, please check out our Cisco DNA Center YouTube channel as well as the Assurance Guide and User Guide. Thank you for watching.